Hey, Susan. I have a new camera and I am figuring it out. This is a wreath that I'm working on. How are you doing? It is going to be St. Patty's. So here is the sign. Doing pretty good. I, I would show you this camera, but... I can't do that. <laughs> so here's some ribbon I'm going to be using. So we're going to do some ribbon tails and this and this. And I'm going to be making some curls out of this mesh. So on the top here, I've got 12 inch poofs. These are called poofs. And down here, I have 30 inch ruffles. This is called a ruffle. So we're gonna make some 10 inch curls. Hey GK, hey Judy. I am playing with a new camera that I bought. It's called a Mevo. And it will allow me to say, okay, let's zoom in here. If y'all wanna see a closer shot. And then I can zoom back out to full. Susan, I have been making wreaths since the beginning of January. <laughs> so not that long, not that long at all. I, um, I started watching wreath makers about let's see, this is February, so about eight months ago, I uh, just kind of stumbled upon them and was like, oh, this looks interesting, and started watching them, and then towards the end of, well, in December, I pulled, if y'all remember, I used to have um, booths um, in two different locations, so I had booths in 2019, no, 20. 2020 and 2021 and at the end of 20 end of last year I came out of the booths because the stuff in the booths just wasn't selling last year so <clears throat> I wasn't sure where I was going to take my crafts next and what I was going to do next and I almost completely got out of crafting I was having those conversations with Mary and Maria and, um, but then I stumbled upon wreath making and I bought some wreath kits initially and tried it out. And I was like, I really like this. And the first wreath that I made, I sold and I went, oh, people like my wreaths too. So let me, um, let me keep trying this and just see where it goes. And so far I've made about 30 wreaths. I've sold 12 and I sell so far two or three wreaths every week. So pretty cool. 
So we're gonna make some curls. And so we're gonna put curls here in the top part of the wreath. So a curl, we're gonna do a 10 inch curl. And a curl is just that. We're gonna cut 10 inches of mesh, so 28 to 18. And I'm just using a rotary cutter. So I'm gonna cut two pieces at 10 inches. Oh, I think we'll do three curls. So three pieces at 10 inches. And then I'm gonna get my Bodabra. So I don't know if any of you have ever used a bow maker before. This is called a Bodabra. I do not use this to make bows, but it does a really good job of holding curls. So a curl is simply taking a 10 inch piece of mesh and we're gonna do just like it says. We're going to curl I'm gonna curl this up and then I'm gonna put it in my Bodabra just to hold it. That's all I'm doing with the Bodabra. Oh, I love Candy. Candy and Megan with Gal vs. Glue Gun. Um, I'm actually in Candy's creative group and I love watching uh, the two of them create stuff. So I've got one curl here now. I'm gonna take the other piece of mesh and we're gonna curl it. I'm gonna hold it in there. And then sometimes I'll actually take two or three or four um, different types of mesh and make curls. So like the first curl would be one color or one style of mesh. And the next curl would be another style of mesh. Um, but tonight I'm just going to do all three with this because I've already got two different kinds of mesh in here. This is a tinsel mesh, and then this is just a plain um, white mesh with a white stripe in it. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna crisscross these two, and then I'm gonna put this one right in underneath it. And I'm gonna take this right here between these two ties, these two twist ties, I'm going in vertically. I'll show you what I mean by that. So on the bottom, some when I put in curls, I'll put them in horizontally. But when I'm putting in curls on the top, and that's exactly what you do. And then you just kind of fluff them out and get them pointed up. And so now we've got some curls in our wreath. And so we'll have ruffles and poofs and curls. And what you're creating here is a base. So we just want to have a really full base because remember our, our sign needs a place to sit. If you've never made a wreath before, this is a sign. I've already added the ways we're going to attach the sign to the wreath. And then we're going to have ribbon tails. And on this particular um, format or a recipe or template, I'm not putting a bow. Um, usually on the less poofy wreaths, I'll <clears throat> add a bow. But this one is just going to, we're showing off, I want to show off the, the mesh and the sign. And then I showed Susan earlier, but these are the two, the two ribbons that we're going to use. So these are going to be our ribbon tails in our wreath. Tag Mary and Maria. Huh. 
<laughs> so what's everyone been doing today? So what I like to use, so I'm going to set this wreath to the side. Oh, I'll show you all. Here is a wreath I was working on last night. But um, the sign that I want to put on this wreath, I don't have yet. It's on its way. But I went ahead and built the base. So this is actually burlap with a green mesh. So um, I'm gonna, I need to, once the sign gets here, I can put the sign on and then add the ribbons that I want to add to that one. And then I posted a, hello, Carol. How do I get out of that? Hold on. All right, come here. What? All right, Maria's on her way. I know, Mary, I'm live. Can you believe it? I'll show you that real quick. So we're working on... The only reason why I'm going live is because my new camera arrived today. It's called a Mevo. M-E-V-O. And what's cool about it is, like, if I wanted to bring y'all in closer and show y'all just a particular zoom in on something I can zoom in and then I can also zoom back out for a wide view so we're going to finish working on this but right now I'm going to make some curls we're going to place the curl so since we're going to be making let's see three times whatever three times seven is <clears throat> Carol, I did. I did not know what I was doing. And I did. I posted. And then I was like, oh, this actually went live. And so I posted and immediately went back and deleted it. 21. Okay, 21. All right. So I get these at the Dollar Tree. And this is what I use to put my cut mesh in. And these are from the Dollar Tree, too. They're just little chip clips. And I'll show you what we're going to do with them. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the reason we need seven is because I've already put one grouping of curls in the wreath. So I just need seven because on the top part of a wreath are eight ties. And on the bottom part, of a wreath base or 10. Oh, you want this one, GK? The easy bow maker? I love my easy bow maker. This is what I've been using y'all to make amazing wreaths. Well, amazing bows. All right, so I've got my pan here. I've got my 10 inch mesh. So we are gonna make some curl. So, right. I'm gonna measure out 10 inches. And then I'm just gonna put that in there. Gonna measure out 10 inches. The only thing about using the Mevo is that you have to use another device to see your comments. And Facebook loves to just make these comments disappear. So you're now I'm noticing you have to, now I know why when I watch other people that go live with a Mevo, they're constantly um, having to come over here and tap the screen, tap the screen to see the comments. All right, so that's three. Four, five, six, 
four. This isn't heavy enough, you go to the Big Daddy, and this is these are little clip or little little things that I use to clip ties, clip pipe cleaners, clip florals. Thank you, Mary. Yes, I've got to learn how to ask all the questions. back. I got to get another roll. That's the other thing I have learned. Um, ha, ha you're funny, Carol. Yes, now y'all can start watching me. Mary and I are going to have to sync our um, calendars. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the other thing that I started doing today was I got my business TikTok account set up. Well, I think I did that this weekend, my business TikTok account. And I made my first, did I make two TikToks? I think I made two TikToks. So I've got two TikToks. So if you want to find me, uh, you go to TikTok and search for at J Norrell Creations and you can find me on TikTok. Mary, what? Hi, Cheryl. Mary, what launch party were you watching? I thought I thought Chocolate Tour's launch party was tomorrow. Just squaring off the edge. This should be ten. Hold on. 21. Okay, yeah, I needed 21. This is where I get messed up sometimes. I either, I either don't cut enough ruffles or I don't cut enough curls because I lose count. 18. And if we don't have enough, when we get to where we need to go, we'll just cut another one. 19. And if I cut too many, the good thing is I make curls often. So, I think 
that's 20. I just keep the curls in the color somewhere else. I think that's 21. All right, so we'll set this aside. So if you can see over here, this is my, when I'm done making reeds, mesh stash. And then I've got three bookcases that I've already filled up with mesh and ribbon to the point where I had to move out Valentine's ribbon today off a shelf into a, one of my drawers so that I could put lemon, my lemon, new lemon ribbons um, up. All right, so we'll pull out our Bodabra. So Bodabra, you can use this Bodabra to make bows, but I use the Easy Bow Maker. The only reason why I got this Bodabra, and I got it off Facebook Marketplace from somewhere here local for 10 bucks, is because somebody else that I watch, she uses a Bodabra to um, hold her curls. So... So we're just curling them up. And if you want to see a little bit closer, so I'm just taking the mesh. And when you're making your curls, you want to make sure that you're keeping your ends in. So that you don't have any loosey goosey curls. You got perfect curls on the end. and not curls that are all sticking out and janky. So y'all tell me, how is the sound? So the camera is actually in the microphone. So how does the sound, how is the picture? The picture is supposed to be like really good. The quality. So we're just going to take two and crisscross it and then one up the center. And then this is where the clips come in. So for the clips, now I just clip that. And I've got this little curl bundle ready to go. So I see some makers, some wreath makers, they will already have like, um, all the curls made up except for maybe like two bundles and then they just make one or two bundles on a live so how painful was that y'all watching me cut all of those pieces of mesh and now you're sitting here just watching me make curls I mean is this just like riveting TV or what? <laughs> I don't think y'all have ever... Uh, maybe some of y'all watched me make a garland. Well, that's true. It is making a longer live. I'm not sure. Well, I did make a garland once. Um, I want to learn. Okay, we can make a bow tonight. Um. Uh, let's see. How do I? I'm gonna mute myself. Hold on. Hmm. Can I mute myself?
All right, can you hear me now? Oh, there we go. I'm back. <laughs> I am. <laughs> okay. So even um, muting myself is delayed on my end. Yeah, I see the comments. I muted myself to holler upstairs to Darren to um, to ask him if he would refill my water glass. <laughs> but I didn't want y'all to hear me yell upstairs to him. So I went into this little Mevo app on my iPad. So the Mevo, all the controls for it are on my iPad. And then I'm watching the comments on my iPhone. So anyhow, so I didn't want y'all to hear me yelling up there at him. Um, because believe me, the last thing you want to hear is me having run upstairs to get me some more water and then run back downstairs. Y'all wouldn't hear me talk for the next 30 minutes. I'd be huffing and puffing. So another little, so these just work really well. And then uh, sometimes I'll use one of my other trays and throw all these in a tray. I've tried to kind of come up with um, ways to kind of do like if I'm making several wreaths at one time so I can have different containers to put stuff in to um, speed up the process. Hello, Maria, my twin. Oh, so anyhow, so if I was still going live last fall, then y'all would have seen me unbox insane amounts of Dollar Tree stuff, which you can't see. Um, if you could see on, thank you, sweetheart. Yeah, we need to get some more tangerine. Yeah. Okay. Anyhow, I bought a ton of stuff last fall going into Christmas. Like, do y'all remember? Oh, hold on. I'll show y'all something. So this little guy is sitting across from me in a chair because, um, hey, Amanda Lee. Amanda's one of my friends from my wreath making groups and business coaching and creative coaching. So y'all, these, I went on a hunt. It was when, let's see, last fall, it was in October, mom and I went to the beach in Florida then I went, so we went from, I went from Kentucky, Tennessee, Florida, well, Tennessee, Alabama, Florida, back to Alabama, back to Tennessee, then Mississippi, and then from Mississippi to Georgia, I met Maria and Mary, and then from Georgia back to Kentucky. So in all those states, I went to all these different Dollar Trees. I have 36 of these gnomes. And I have, I think, 25 or 26 pairs of these boots. And then I bought 36 different things for them to hold on to. And so my plan was I was going to make all of these and sell them at Christmas. Well, I made one. And I made this one in the hotel room. Um, but I was at meeting Maria and Mary. And they are darn cute. And so... I've got all of those supplies, plus probably enough Christmas supplies that I bought at the Dollar Tree to make about 300 items. Uh, but then I decided to come out of my booth and and um, go on a different path, a different path. So, making a curl.
But now what we'll start doing is y'all can, um, would y'all want to see me unboxing wreath supply boxes? Like when I get do it, 300 items. Yes, 300 items in my shop for Christmas for next year. So would y'all want to see me unboxing wreath supplies, like different colors of mesh, ribbon, wreath forms, All I can say is I am ready for next year. Oh, that's a good idea, Mary. I hadn't thought about just instead of making the gnomes, just selling them as kits. Huh. Y'all, Mary sent me a link that had like this one page, um, She sent me a link to this person's blog or something that had all these pictures of stuff from current Easter Dollar Tree. And have y'all seen these new Dollar Tree Easter Bunny gnomes? They are so cute. So if you're just joining us, say hi. Hey, tell us where you're from. I'm just interested to see where all these people are coming in from. Say hi. Tell us where you're from. We're making a wreath tonight. I'm currently in the process of making curls. And I'm using my Bodabra to hold my curls until I get three together. And then I'm clipping them together. As I was saying earlier, I have a TikTok account now, so you can follow me on TikTok. Uh, my TikTok, if you go to TikTok and search for at J-N-O-R-R-E-L-L -L creations, you can find me on TikTok. You can also find me on Instagram, again, at J-N-O-R-R-E-L-L -L creations. So I'm on TikTok, I'm on Instagram. Carol, did I, I did not realize you were in Ozark, Missouri. Oh my God, you live where one of my absolutely favorite shows is filmed. That show alone makes me want to come visit the Ozarks. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, Mary. I'm also on Etsy where my shop is. So like this wreath will be, when we're done with it, it will be available on Etsy. And if I was smart, I would have gone ahead and put the item listing um, out there for someone to go ahead and buy it if they wanted to. But I didn't think that far ahead because I just got excited that I got the Mevo camera and was like, I'm just going to go live. So yes, if you go to, well, you can go to my Etsy store by going to my web address and that's um, www.jnorell, J-N-O-R-R-E-L-L, creations.com. That'll take you to my Etsy store. Carol, it's not film there. Lake of the Ozarks. Is Lake of the Ozarks different than Ozarks? Then Ozark. Oh, you didn't like it? Uh, I love it. And all we have left is a half of one season, or a half of the last season that'll come out in a few months, and then it'll be over. All right, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven. I cut one extra. I'm sorry. Put that over there. Oh, thanks, Amanda. And thanks for popping in. I appreciate it. Oh, 
out you're near Branson. Okay. You may be near, there's a wreath person I follow, Tammy Harris Hodges from Polka Dot Wreath Co. She lives in the, maybe she lives in Ozark? All right, so we've got a set of curls here in this first tie. So what So what this started out looking like, I'll show you, I've got one right here. So before I put the 12 inch poofs on top and the 30 inch curls on the bottom, Carol, her name is Tammy Harris Hodges with Polka Dot Wreath Co, Polka Dot Wreath Company. She's one of my mentors and my coaches. So this is how this wreath started. This is a 15 inch elevated, because it's got elevation, wreath form with ties. So this is one way that you can start a wreath. So that's how this one started. The only difference is those ties are green metallic. Uh, but this is a 15, they call this a 15 to 25 inch wreath form because from here to here is 15 inches and then with the tines completely out so with this tine out I don't know if I can get that in but from this tip to this tip is 25 inches so this is a 15 to 25 inch elevated wreath form. So that's how this started. And then the next next time I go live, we'll start from scratch. I had just I'd already done this part before um before I decided to go live. So I'm just gonna take these three curls and I'm laying them right here. Hello Liz Welcome. We're making a wreath. So I'm putting them right there vertically. And then the one thing you'll know about mesh, if you've ever had a mesh wreath, is it likes to fray. So no problem. We just come in and give it a haircut where it frays. All right. So we got curls there and we're just going to work our way around. Put curls in our wreath. When you come in, say hi. Tell us where you're from. My name is John Norell. I'm with Jane Norell Creations. We're working on a mesh wreath tonight. This is going to be a St. Patrick's Day wreath. This is going to be our sign for our wreath. And once we're done, we're going to be making some ribbon tails using this shamrock, glitter shamrock on canvas, and then some green glitter. So this is a two and a half inch ribbon, and this is a one and a half inch ribbon. Carol, if you ever see her go live, make sure you tell her I sent you. She's my new buddy. She, I see her, she's in our coaching group, business coaching group, and she goes live every day at five o'clock my time uh, for business coaching. So the business coaching has helped not just with the wreath business, but also um, with our technology business that we have. So I'm just putting these curls in. I just like curls. I just think they're kind of whimsical looking. They just add something special to a wreath. 
then we're gonna have, and you wanna always make sure you're really pushing this in tight. Oh, thank you all for sprinkling. So if you like watching me, um, tap on your screen and then you're gonna see three little dots. Click on the three dots and then um, click to follow me. Okay, so she's in Springfield. All right, we got one curl left in it. Flew over here. Oh. You, the post office just delivered our mail. I must have had a package because I just got a notification that it was delivered. Our post is being delivered later and later and later. All right, so the way that we attach the sign is with pipe cleaners. You use a lot of pipe cleaners making reeds. I have not used pipe cleaner since I was in probably grade school. Anybody do anything fun this weekend? We didn't do anything fun. Most of y'all know we're caregivers, my husband and I. So we are pretty much homebound. We didn't even go... Well, we've been covered in ice and snow since Thursday. There is still ice and snow out there, which is just surprising to me that, oh, Liz, did you get caught up on sleep? Do you feel nice and rested after the weekend? Hey, Karen. Craft supply, shopping, and chalking. Ooh, Susan, what did you buy this weekend? What did you chalk? But anyhow, so we've still got snow and ice out there. I'm thinking it should mostly be cleared away by tomorrow. So last Wednesday, I don't know, I guess it was about 7 o'clock, I was like, Darren, we need to go to Kroger with this ice storm coming in case we lose power. We need to be stocked up on stuff. So he was like, okay, y'all, we don't think these are pipe cleaners or Chanel stems. And... The Chanel stems, I'll come back to that story. The Chanel stems from the Dollar Tree, they're not the piece of, oh yeah, GK, go go take care of your Labradoodle pups. They need their mama. So I buy my Chanel stems or pipe cleaners from my suppliers because the Chanel stems from the Dollar Tree the gauge of the wire that's in a Chanel stem varies very greatly depending on whether or not you're getting more expensive Chanel stems like from a supplier. Not that these are real expensive, but they're like maybe two or three dollars for that whole box. I think maybe. Um, But the gauge of wire in here is thicker. So you want a strong, a stronger pipe cleaner than what you get at the Dollar Tree to hold this sign on. Because this sign is pretty thick and pretty heavy. Let's see, what did Maria say? I did go to Highwell today to get some storage things for the new, but I may have purchased a couple. Oh, Maria! 
What did you buy? All right, so we're gonna put our sign on. So anyhow, so I sent Darren to Kroger to get a few things, not even thinking that I was sending him into, well, let's just be honest, I sent him straight into hell because it was the night before an ice storm and I wasn't even thinking what he was potentially walking into. And you don't know my husband, but he, he, he's not a people person. He doesn't like people things. And I was just thinking, oh, I'll just run over here to Kroger and get a few things. Well, we ended up with Italian bread because it was the only bread in the entire store. There was no milk, none. Not one gallon, no kind of milk. They had none of my creamer. What else was... Y'all, I was going to make a roast. There was one onion. One onion in the whole store. Only a few potatoes left. <laughs> apparently everybody obviously needed milk and bread but they apparently also needed my creamer and and everyone was making roast or whatever everybody was making needed onions and potatoes because they were gone right Carol I mean no milk and bread during a snowstorm I mean what I should have done we knew this ice was coming I should have, like, two or three days beforehand, not the night before, gone and, and taken care of that. Oh, Liz, I buy toilet paper and um, paper towels from Sam. So we always have plenty, plenty of that. There's a potato storage and onions. Y'all, this is, this is the life of a caregiver. I have no idea what goes on out in the real world. I don't even think I've left my house in a week and a half. I don't think. I'm pretty sure it's been a week and a half. I mean, you know, all of our days are the same. We wake up, we take care of Larry. We work our IT business. I make, I make um, wreaths now and ship wreaths out. But UPS just comes and picks them up here at the house, so that's nice. Maria, I still don't have creamer. There's no cream. There's everyone in this town drinks hazelnut creamer. Coffee mate, hazelnut creamer. Everyone drinks. All right. So I'm going to start attaching our sign. So I usually start from the top. I don't want my curls under my sign. So I'm going to pull these back out. So I'm going to take this pipe cleaner and feed it through my mesh, through the wires of my base. And I'm just pulling it down and I'm going to tie it off underneath here, which y'all really can't see. Oh, Liz, I'm, um, you need to join a produce co-op. I need to join something. Hello, Patty. Welcome. So I'm just tying this sign off underneath. So I'm just taking, let's see if I can show you all this. I'm just taking the pipe cleaner. There's a metal, there's metal bars under here and I'm just tying it off on the metal. Liz, um, I'm a bit of a creamer snob. It has to be the kind that's in the refrigerated section. <laughs> I don't like the powdered or what I call the, the fake creamer, the creamer that can sit out and not be in the um, and not be in the refrigerator. I just I don't understand non-dairy creamer. What is it? I mean, is it dairy? I guess it, I guess it's like canned milk. I don't know. I just find it a very odd substance. Hi, Stephanie. Welcome. Yep, 
Y'all, I mean, I do like coffee. So, I mean, my substitute was they had over in the cold brew section the Starbucks uh, caramel macchiato in the bottles. So, I had Darren get me some of that. So, I would at least have coffee. So, you never want your curls under your sign. So, I'm bringing these... Curls out from underneath my sign because you spend all that time making them, you don't want to hide them, and then your sign can rest just on your mesh. The hardest part is tying on the um, the sign. At least I think it is. Let's get our curls out. Let's look for our pipe cleaner. There it is. back out here. Alright. So now we're gonna cut. Let me catch up on comments. Thank you. Thank you. Hello Janice. Hello Deborah. Welcome. If you're new, make sure you tell us. Make sure you say hi. Uh Janice, the mesh, okay, so the poofs here, this is 21 inch mesh. My curls and my ruffles down here are 10 inch mesh. The curls I cut at 10 inches, there's three curls in each tie. Um, the, oh, thank you, Karen. The ruffles down here are cut at 30 inches. All right, bye Carol, have a good night. See you later. I'm gonna make me a skinny. I've been drinking mine with a heavy whipping cream and skinny syrup. <laughs> yeah, my, I mean, so, I mean, I like coffee, but I don't like just black coffee. It's gotta have flavorings in it. Um, and, but I just, I love hazelnut. I love hazelnut creamer. All right. So we're going to make, oh, you know what? I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this for my funky bows. Hold on. I oh, know, dead air. Where did I go? Oh no. Uh, let's see. 
Maybe we'll do, I was thinking, I was thinking, I was thinking tails, but I need, with this design, I usually do a funky bow, but I don't have a solid, oh, I can do white. That's what we'll do. Hold on. Right back. Okay, we are going to do this for our funky bows, and I'll show you how to make a funky bow, and then we're going to use this for our tails. Y'all, this is how I buy ribbon now in 50-yard rolls. That's new. Yes, I, let's put blue in here. If I had, can you, all right, can you believe this, other than... The ribbon that I have for Patriotic, I have no blue um, I have no blue ribbon. It's on my to buy list. I've been buying as I made it let's see here. Thanks. I want to make a star wreath for a friend in orange and I uh, to honor her husband that has COPD. The orange mesh I have makes it look girly. Both the cloth-like mesh. But don't like how it does. Oh, I'll have to show you all my lemon signs. Liz, you'll love my lemon signs. Janice, I'm thinking. So you, you have the same kind of mesh that I've put on this wreath. Um, COPD. I mean, I know what COPD is. Does COBT, COPD, is, um, does it have a ribbon color? Is the ribbon color orange? Is, is, or is their logo orange? Or is anything about it? Is orange the color for COPD? Do you have a COPD sign or I'm trying to, I don't know a lot about COPD in terms of like, uh, do they have, you know, like, do they have like a shape, like the cancer awareness ribbon? Okay. So orange is the color for COPD. I don't have any orange mesh. Otherwise, I would show you or I would come up with something. Um, so, Janice, do you have the star wreath form from Dollar Tree? So here's one of my lemon signs. That I'm going to be turning into a wreath. And then this is a new sign that I got. Yes, orange is receding.
Um, the way that I've seen the Dollar Tree forms, wreath forms, used best is, so the star, um, the star should have, so this is just a basic wreath form. Um, this is a 14 inch wreath form. So Janice, the star probably either has four metal bars or three metal bars. So um, on that star, I would go, I don't, know how, I don't know how many pipe cleaners you're gonna need on the outside, but make sure you have like, if you've got a pipe cleaner, make sure you stagger your pipe cleaners. So your wreath form should also have little bars like there too. So if you're gonna put a pipe cleaner there, also have a pipe cleaner here on the bottom two, or either the top one in middle and then the bottom one in the middle so that they're staggered. So that shows dimension in your wreath and then, like Mary said, um, you know, if you've got orange mesh, depending on the shade of the orange. So, I mean, orange can be male, you know, for boys and girls. But if it's more of a coral orange, I can see where it could look, you know, girly. But if you could mix in some white, uh, if you could get some white mesh, um, mix in some white, and you're going to probably, it's going to look like almost like a Vols, Tennessee Volunteers wreath. Um, but then you've got some white and orange. And then what are you putting his picture on? Like, are you mounting it to a piece of wood or to a piece of metal? So one of my suppliers, y'all... I don't, I love impressionist artists. And so there's a whole series of these from my supplier. I only got the lemon one right now, but there's several of these. I just absolutely love this. I can't wait to make this wreath. It is such a pretty sign. Yeah, Janice, I would mix... I would mix the white and the orange together. All right, y'all. So we're going to cut funky tails at 24 inches. And so something new that I have are called ribbon boards. So you can have different ribbon boards. So this is a 10 inch, 12 inch board. And this is a 13 inch you can read that or not, 13 inch, 14 inch ribbon tail board. So this just makes cutting ribbon tails and funky ribbon so much easier. Um, yeah, I would definitely think of like, um, I'm trying to think maybe, oh, you're very welcome. That's what I want to be here for y'all. So we're going to do nine of these because we're going to put one of these in every other. That's one, two, three, four, five.
There we go. So I used, what did that do? Oh. So I used the 12 inch one and used double the 12 and that gets you your 24. So now we're going to dovetail these. Fold it like a taco. Cut to the sunshine. That is what my friend Tammy says. Her Tammyisms, as we like to say, are hysterical. She is so much fun to watch. I've got to come up with my own funny things or funny little sayings to say. Those dovetail these. So we call this a funky bow, and all we're gonna do with the funky bow is fold it in half, and then we're gonna come up about two or three inches, crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Divide, twist, come in here, pick a starting spot, so I just tie that in like that. Once I'm done tying it in, I push my tines back and fluff out part the C. And there we go. That is called a funky bow. It looks kind of like a bow, but not all the effort of a real bow. So now we're going to do our tails. We're going to do our tails at 13 inches. See how many I can get out of this spool. One, two, But I had another roll just in case. That's the other thing I've learned. If you're gonna buy a ribbon, even if some of this ribbon that I buy is 20 bucks a roll, I've learned if you're gonna buy one, you better buy two. So you have Nine and nine, because we're gonna all we're gonna alternate. So we'll do a funky bow in one, and then we'll put ribbon tails in the other. And the way we decide, I say we, we as in the wreath makers, the way I decide um, what colors I'm going with is based upon the sign. So in the sign, we've got two different shades of green. We've got glitter green a glitter emerald green, we've got a lighter green, we've got white. So typically you pick your, you find your sign that you want. And then from the sign, you figure out the colors of your ribbons and the colors of the mesh. And something new I have been working with and learning. If I can find it over here. is anybody ever used one of these from grade school the color wheel and finding different color relationships complementary split triad tetra triad so anybody ever use one of these a color wheel All right, so we 
used all the green. I have not opened this white yet. I had never used a color wheel, but there was a training in my creative coaching group that I'm in. A training videos, training videos on the color wheel. So I have been learning the color wheel. All right, 13 and white. So who's been watching the Olympics? I have been watching the Olympics, especially the figure skating. It's my absolute favorite thing to watch. I like the figure skating and I like the luge. And Germany got the gold in the men's luge last night. For like the fifth or sixth year in a row. So good for them. I don't think we have a very good luge team. I don't know if we've won any time any time recent recent history. <laughs> what, Mary? You're not glued to the Olympics? See, while I, when I watch different wreath makers go live, my, um, all their stuff just gets like piled up. So if you look, if you can see over here to this, to the, to this side, um, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff piled up. All right. So these are going to be our ribbon tails. Now all I'm going to do is put those together. Go up the center, twist them, put them here in our twist tie. Separate. I've got more St. Patrick's Day ribbon. It's coming. It should be here tomorrow. So let's see. Was it last week? Last week I made two St. Patrick's Day wreaths and they sold within a few hours of me posting both of them. Dig back in and find the Yes. So if you look in here, yeah. So the tie, so these ties are long. So I've got the tie is tying down the poof mesh. It's also tying down the three curls and now I'm going to put in my two of my tails go up the center 
pinch, put it in, tuck it in, twist, twist, and then you can either leave, because these kind of blend in with the, um, so you can either leave them up or push them down and back, however, whatever you want to do. And then I'll take my finger, and this is all wired ribbon. So it's all I use for making wreaths. This is wired ribbon. So I'm taking my index finger, and I'm just just gently rolling the ribbon so that it kind of lays lays down. So yeah. So the tie turn it under the tie is holding down all the mesh and the ribbon tails right. what everybody have for dinner tonight I'm having water because, well, I decided to go live. I may go up and have a thing of um, cereal later. I made a big pot roast Sunday, Saturday, what's today, Monday? I think I made that Saturday. And we had that leftovers last night, and then Darren and Larry had leftovers again tonight. So if you're new and you don't know, so I'm married, my husband is Darren, and then we take care of his dad. His dad lives with us, and his name is Larry. So if you hear me talk about Darren and Larry, that's who those people are. Whoops, and as you can see, I skipped one. So let's take this guy back out of here. Corned beef and cabbage. Not a fan of either. There's not even any particular way that I like cabbage. I was trying to think. I don't like spring rolls. I don't like egg rolls. I don't like cabbage in any. Egg roll in a bowl with roasted veggies. As I just said, I'm not an egg roll fan. I made Philly cheese steak mix, kind of like taco. And, but hmm. I like Philly cheese steaks. That sounds good. So I did take out two. We're going to have ribeyes tomorrow night. Took those out of the freezer. I like to buy the... We have a local person that um, that we get our beef from, and so I took out two three-inch cut bone-in. Oh no, these are T-bones, bone-in T-bones. So we're gonna have those tomorrow night.
sometimes you really have to manhandle the ribbon. I've learned that this mesh and ribbon and everything, sometimes you have to be kind of rough with it to get it to do exactly what you want it to do. And it's okay. It can handle it. Now we just go down to the bottom row and repeat the same thing. Now sometimes on the bottom down here, especially when you've got the green mesh, the green tinsel mesh, mesh and the emerald green tinsel ties, they can be a little hard to find, but sometimes you have to. This stuff wants to be hard-headed and doesn't want to do what you want it to do. So you just bend it and push it around and eventually it'll give. And sometimes I pull things right out of those ties. I did that earlier today. Darren and I, Darren was helping me make some short videos so I can start editing editing them for TikTok and reels So I don't know if y'all saw the farmhouse wreath that I made earlier. I posted it uh, earlier today. I think I posted a video. That was my first um, stab at a farmhouse-y style wreath. And I've been surprised. There's been a lot of interest in it today. Um, even somebody that comes today during the day to help us with Larry... Um, she was like, oh, I really want that. So, um, and then several people reached out to me on Facebook and were, were, were are interested in it or really liked it. So, you know, when you're learning a new style like farmhouse, I had bought some of the, you know, different kind of farmhousey ribbons. Um, but you know, it's a learning curve to kind of go, okay, I'm going to pick out this mesh and this sign and these ribbons, you know, I mean like your, whoops, hold on. your holidays are kind of easy to figure out. You know, you've got certain colors and certain, um, you know, colors that say Easter, colors that say Valentine's, colors that say St. Patrick's Day or Mardi Gras. Um, but farmhouse is, kind of, is, a, is a little harder um, because you don't really want glittery, shiny, over the top. That's not farmhouse. So you want to blend different um, colors and different ribbons. And sometimes it's hard to find meshes that are more subdued. So the mesh that I use in that wreath, it does have a little bit of gloss because I wanted something to like, if you had it on your front door and the sunlight hit it, you would see a little bit of glimmer and that would kind of direct your eye towards the wreath, but I didn't want to use any kind of, uh, you know, 
glitter or over the top colors because that wouldn't be farmhouse. So, um, and those kind of things are hard to capture in videos or in photos. So like, I know the only way you're going to see that about that wreath is once you put it on your door and sunlight hits it and catch it and it something twinkles and kind of catches your eye and it gravitates towards the wreath. So, you know, when, when you're designing a wreath, all of those kind of things are going through my head. How's it going to look on the door? What's going to, well, how's it going to look at night? How's it going to look with the porch light on? How's it going to look? So, I don't know, just kind of, it's very interesting to me, all the nuances that go into figuring, figuring out how to put together a wreath. And then y'all, like when I run out of a mesh that I really like, or I run out of a ribbon that I really like, I actually get a little sad. Because <laughs> right now, it's hard to get supplies. So... I get sad because I'm like, well, I'm probably not going to be able to get that ribbon again or get that mesh again. Because when I go to try to find it, um, you can't find it because I bought it and so did everybody else. And so now it's out of stock. And then you look at three or four or five other different suppliers and they don't have it in stock either. So I'm learning that if it's something that I really like, I need to buy... Um, multiple two and three. Yeah, Carol, I'm still here. Is that a, is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> Y'all didn't even see me make the first part of the wreath. How long have I been on live? Oh, Lord, an hour and a half. Well, we've been talking about other things, and then I had to go figure out what ribbon. Um, so I've, I've left a couple of times and left just dead air going. And we've been talking. And So to me, when the sign is this big, I typically will just put the sign in the center and do like the funky bows and then the ribbon tails like I'm doing now. Because I some people will take the sign and like um, put it over here on the side of the wreath and then you've got the sign hanging off the wreath so that then you have room to put a bow I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of the sign completely hanging off the wreath. But I've seen it both ways. I, so, like, if I have a smaller sign, like, so, like, this sign. This is the one I'm working on next. So, this sign, another farmhouse style. So, this sign on here, then yeah, I could put it on the side. The sign isn't going past my wreath, but this is a 12 inch sign. So if I put it on the side of my wreath, it's going way out here. So in this case, I could put this on the side of the wreath and then put the bow over here on this side so that they're uh, across from each other. That'll, that would even out. Um, I also see some people, they'll put a sign here and then put three bows. So they'll put a bow here, they'll put a bow here, and then they'll put another bow down here. So I've got to, well, I was going to make this one on, I forget what wreath I was going to do it on. Oh, this, well, I'm not sure. I've got some, um, I need to get some sunflower ribbon. So I don't have any sunflower ribbon. So that may hold off. That may, well, I'm either going to do it with the farmhouse ribbon that I have, or I'm going to wait until I have some sunflower ribbon. 
I don't have any sunflower ribbon. And oh, let me show I'll show y'all. Let me put this in before I get off. And I'll show y'all the next one. Maybe we'll make this one tomorrow night. Carol, this is why I'm still on because we keep going off on tangents. So maybe we'll make this one tomorrow night. So this is the mesh. This is a drift mesh. It's got like cotton balls in it. And then it's called a window pane. So it's got window panes. So this is the mesh we're going to be using, and y'all, this is the sign. Is that not cute? So maybe we'll make this one tomorrow night, because this is a different wreath style, and this one will have a bow. So we could do this one tomorrow night. And that one, yeah, it'll be on an elevated wreath form as well. And then one night, I'll show y'all the pancake style that I do. So I'm trying to, you know, get a lot of holidays made. So um, y'all, my Valentine's wreaths are in my shop. They're 15% off right now. So if you go to my shop, www.jnorrellcreations.com, all of my Valentine's signs are 15% off through the 14th. So let's see, Valentine's are in there. There's still a couple of winter wreaths left. St. Patrick's Day is in there. Easter is in there. I've got Patriotic to make. Um, but I'm also working on the everyday wreaths. So something, you know, wreaths that people would want to have on their door year round. Because some people don't like to decorate for the holidays. So like the lemons could be year round, even though it's, I guess it's a little more summery. I've got one bee wreath left. So it is a bee wreath in my shop. The other one, the big one sold. It shipped out this morning. All right. So there's some fluffing to do. I've got some zhuzhing some fluffing to go through and just, you know, get everything pointed in the right direction and a little more even. Thank you. So this wreath is a 26 by 26 by eight inches. Thank you. All the hearts, all the hearts. Thank you, Liz. Um, oh, I do have one spring. It's this lamb. It is so cute. So I do have one spring in there. Um, people decorate just for Mother's Day? Thank you, Cheryl. I didn't know people decorated for Mother's Day. So you would put a wreath on your door just for Mother's Day? <sighs> I 
Okay. Yes, I buy my mother really nice gifts and really nice cards. I've just never had someone suggest, oh, you should get your mother a wreath for Mother's Day. I've passed a kidney stone, which from what I understand is kind of like pushing a bowling ball out of you. Oh, I see. I see a Mother's Day wreath in the sense of. I mean, like when I tag my wreaths, a lot of my wreaths I tag so that people, when they're searching, gift for her, gift for him, gift for mom, gift for them. So, I mean, I. Um. I hope you can sleep tonight too, Mary. Oh, Liz. Yes. So somebody else that I follow, Sincerely Creative Mom, she did the most beautiful tulip candle ring. Um, so that is something that I'm interested in doing. Um, I did get some chocolate tour stuff in today. Do y'all want to, do y'all want to see it? It's not anything new. Um, I got some of the mason jars and several of the Creative Kickstart kits um, to make several of those with the box frames. And then I can put them in my Etsy shop. <laughs> Mary, if I decide to do a tulip ring, if I figure out how to do it, which I have, I know Sincerely Creative Mom, Melissa Morrow, she has a tutorial out there. So um, if I decide to do something like that, then then that could potentially be a birthday present. Who knows? Because it's not going to look good in my house. Once the video posts, make sure you have your notifications set on for this live. And um, I'll post a link to um, Sincerely Creative Mom's video. I think it's public. I'm not, it's either, if it's not public, I'll ask her if I can share it to my page. Um, but I think it's out there and I'll find it and I'll post a link to it on the comments of this of this live. All right, guys and gals, probably all gals, but anyhow, I am going to hop off of here and go get me something to eat. Thank y'all for hanging out with me tonight. I really appreciate it. And um, we'll do this again soon, possibly tomorrow night, unless Mary's going live. So I'll, I'll coordinate with her and see what she's doing. But um, thank you all so much. And I will see you all later. All right. Have a good night, friends. Bye.